Now, Give Kids the World is the destination for children from around the world with their families. And these children have a critical illness and share one wish, and that's to come experience all the magic that Central Florida has to offer. So we provide accommodations and tickets and attractions and food and beverage and parties and all of that for a complete week's stay for the entire family. Henry Landworth is the founder. He was a hotelier here in the Central Florida area, and he actually owned the very first Holiday Inn right outside of the main gate. It was a Holiday Inn main gate east of, of Disney World. So the wish granting organizations, when they would identify a child who had a wish to come to Disney, um, they would often call his hotel and say, hey, would you mind putting the family up for free if we make all the other arrangements? And he would always say yes. And then one day, um, he got the call that a reservation was canceled. It was for a little girl named Amy from Virginia. Um, she'd been battling leukemia and time simply ran out. You know, I had a wonderful career at Disney, thought I would never ever leave. And then um, one fateful day, I was asked to be a fourth for a tennis. And um, my partner was Henry Landworth. And I guess you can say the rest was history. When I got here, we only had 32 villas. Fast forward now, we have 166. We had no attractions. The only thing that was here were the 32 villas, the admin building, and we served ice cream out of a caboose. So that'll kind of give you a, a flavor for what it was like. So now when you think about what we have, uh, we have the Castle of Miracles, we have a boundless playground, we have four attractions that are wheelchair accessible, we have an Amberville um, state where it's filled with games for the kids to play, a miniature golf course for the kids, we have a movie theater, we have a town hall building. So I mean it has just grown exponentially and of course the number of volunteers have grown um, and the number of families that we serve. The first year we only served 300 families, this year we'll serve probably 8,400 families. One thing about the village is we want to keep it whimsical because we want to have all the children, you know, that's always the children first. And if you look in the gingerbread house where they have the meals, it's all children's size seats. Uh, in the villas, the children get the big bedroom with, I mean, and the big bathroom with the big whirlpool and the wheel-in shower. So that's really, if you look for one sustaining theme throughout, it's just what would a child like? Castle Americas, we just celebrated our 25th anniversary of that, believe it or not. We opened that in 1994. Um, beautiful facility. Of course, it was the very first wheelchair accessible carousel, hand carved wood, so that was very unique about it. And then it was built at a time when there was not a lot of at nighttime activity, so it was really the hub of the village. And then someone came up with the idea of putting a gold star on the ceiling of the castle for every child who'd been to the village. And we started it very rudimentary, asked the child to sit down, write their name on a star, we put it in a box, and then we'd have the star fairy come down in the middle of the night and swoop up all the stars and put them on the ceiling. And about a year and a half, two years after we started, um, there was a mother that came down. Well, this was November. They were from Chicago, and they had been down on their wish in March of that year. And her little boy Danny had passed away in October, and she flew down from Chicago just to see his star because she said it represented the happiest week of his life. So, of course, we hadn't tracked all the stars at that time, so it took us an hour and a half to find it, but after that day, we now track all the stars. But I think even more significant is the families tell us that they feel often that they're alone, that nobody can really understand what they're going through. Moms will tell me when they walk into that castle and they look up at that ceiling and they see over 100,000 stars, they don't feel alone anymore because they know there's been other families that have dealt with very similar things. Goodness, we simply could not exist without our volunteers. We have about 18,000 active volunteers. They fill nearly 1,800 volunteer shifts each and every week. Every guest comment that we receive just talks about what those volunteers meant. That these families are struggling back at home and they're usually, you know, doctor's appointments and doctor visits and hospital stays. And, and here, what they come to is find that they've got complete strangers who want, are here for no other reason than just to make sure that every answer to every question is yes. How can we serve you? How can we make life easier for you? So ice cream, we'd always served ice cream here. And when we started, it was out of a caboose. It was a literal train caboose that it was served in. And every time we would expand, we'd have to move the caboose. And finally, it became, you know, well, we, there's no other movement. So we um, decided to make a, an ice cream palace. 
and we would serve ice cream in the evenings. And then one day I was trying to find a quiet place where there were no phones ringing. I wanted to do some work. And so I went to the ice cream palace. And I hear this little tapping on the window and I turn around this little boy on tiptoes. He's peeking in. It's like eight o'clock in the morning. He says, are you open? And I said, well, sure, what do you want? And he said, I want a banana split. And I said, okay, and it's okay with your parents. So brought him in, and I got stuck behind the counter. Once the doors open, an hour and a half later, I'm like serving banana splits and hot fudge sundaes and ice cream cones, and it's just like crazy. So the next day we started serving, starting at 7.30 in the morning until 9.30 at night. And that's been a mainstay of the village ever since. I'd always wanted a way to remember Henry and have his legacy kept alive here at the village, because there's so many people now that didn't, haven't met Henry, board members and staff. And so we came up with the idea of redoing the ice cream palace because it was one of his favorite things as well. Um, and Henry got his start in the hotel business and he was the general manager of the Starlight Motel on the Space Coast during those pioneering days of space exploration. So all the original astronauts stayed at his hotel. So Henry Starlight Scoops is going to be a phenomenal place that will continue that tradition of always serving ice cream no matter what time of day or night the kids want it. But it will have a lot of history about Henry and his experience. So it will be have a 30 foot diameter spaceship on top. It's just going to be really cool. It's the first time that Disney Creative and Universal Creative have come together and worked together on a project. And it was, it's just, I mean, to even say that, to get, I mean, it's just amazing. That just never happens. But it's because of their tremendous commitment to the children and the village that they were able to do that. So I think we're so closely aligned with the hospitality industry and, of course, the theme park industry. And as I like to say when I, you know, do presentations and things, we're really all in the same business. We want to create the perfect guest experience for our guests. The hospitality and the theme park industry does it because they want their guests to keep coming back time and time again. We have to do it because our guests can't come back. We get one opportunity to do it right. And so what we try to do is because we understand the incredible partnership that we have is how do we then draw them into those fundraising and that's where those things come about. So, you know, I mean, Coasting for Kids is an excellent example where you get the coasting enthusiasts as well as a lot of our families, our alumni families from around the world, they go and they do fundraising for us too because it helps them relive their experiences at the village. So we really just kind of think of those different things. You know, the Disney Ride Challenge is another one where folks come down and try to cram all, I guess it's 46 rides now, um, into one day. And I've done that twice. Um, I've only gotten to 43 or 45 twice, so I'm looking forward to my next opportunity to do it. It's a challenge for sure. So those are the kinds of things. We try to find things that are fun, that are engaging, that are a little bit different than other folks do, um, just to try to bring our corporate partners in as well. You know, we really have three words that sum up how folks can get involved. It's give, serve, or share. Of course, giving of your time or giving your resources, your treasures, you know, go online and make a donation because it, it, it takes about $21 million a year just to operate the village. Um, we're very proud to say that we take um, good care of hearts while we're taking care of business. Seven cents of every dollar goes to administration and overhead and 93 cents of every dollar goes directly to the mission. So when folks give, hopefully they, you know, feel like it's, you know, we're very good stewards of those resources. Um, serving, of course, volunteering, filling 1,800 volunteer shifts a week. We get a lot of local volunteers, but we've got a little, you know, church groups that come, youth groups, so you can come in and volunteer for a day or for a week or for whatever. And then the third way is just to share our story. Um, we're probably one of the world's best kept secrets. Not many people have heard about Give Kids the World, so you know, let people know about us and, you know, visit our website. And there's always really great opportunities there to learn how to give, serve, or share.